And now, standing by at the Australian Sports Institute in Canberra, one of this nation's greatest athletes, Robert De Costello. Deke, how are you feeling this morning? A uh, little, little bit, a little bit tired and weary, but still, still very excited and, and looking forward to the, the challenge ahead of us. It's a tremendous opportunity, and really, it's just the, the start of, of seven very challenging, very exciting, and very busy years for us. Did you knock back the odd glass of champagne this morning? No, I, I think I had one or two toasts, and that was about <laughs> all. I, I, uh, I've really been flat out ever since the announcement came through, and uh, just riding on the, on a crest of adrenaline. All right, what does this mean for our athletes? I mean, how important is it? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the greatest things that's ever happened, I think, to Australian sport, certainly in the, the last um, you know, sort of 30 or 40 years. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a window of opportunity that only comes once in a lifetime. And uh, really, it's, it's, uh, it adds the, the foundations to, to build a, a sporting infrastructure and create opportunities for sport for the next 50 years, I think. Australia's been riding on the success of the Melbourne Olympics for, you know, sort of for a good 30 years afterwards. And now we, what we have to do is build, going into 2000, a, uh, a structure and infrastructure that'll last for at least another 30 years. You've run a lot of races, a lot of fantastic races overseas. How important, or how important can it be to have that home ground advantage? Well, it's, it's um, extremely important. Uh, you have to just look at the statistics of the number of medals won by the, the host countries and, uh, and you see the, the tremendous improvement in performance that the athletes log in when the games are in their own backyard. Uh, I look back to the Commonwealth Games up in Brisbane in 82 and it was one of Australia's most successful international sporting events for a long, long time. And I'm sure a lot of that was because the games were here in Australia. Um, if me personally, looking back at the marathon there, it was, uh, it was probably the most memorable event uh, that, that I've won because it was here in Australia and that makes it so very special. How important is that advantage though, specifically to be able to train on the same tracks, to be able to swim in the pool where the races are going to be held, uh, to have yeah. that advantage? I mean, is it, is it a big advantage or is it just you know, a marginal thing? I, I think it's a, it's a, a reasonably big advantage, um, especially if you look at the, at the options. I mean, the option is to, is to travel usually to Europe or, or to the States. So the option is to, to fly for, for 20 odd hours into a, a completely different culture and completely different time zone. And when you, when you can stay here, you can do all of your preparation here, there'll be a host of international sporting events leading up to the games over the next seven years. So you can really get all of the, the international competition or a lot of the international competition that you need here in Australia. And, uh, you know, to, to really reduce a lot of that travel and the, and the culture shock and the time zone changes, it's, uh, it's a, big, a big factor. But I think one of the most important factors is the, is the opportunity to put in place the, the programs and the support structures and the, and the things which the athletes need over the next seven years. And uh, I think with the commitment from, from uh, all levels of government and commitment from the, the corporate sector, uh, and certainly the commitment from the athletes is, is going to be there, we uh, we're really are on the, the threshold of a new era for sport. Thanks, Robert. Robert De Costello, a great competitor and uh, a great Australian, a great ambassador for athletics. We'll continue our special edition of 11am after the break. The winner is Sydney. News of Sydney's win was, of course, carried live around the world. Here's how it figured on some major international news services. Good evening. The International Olympic Committee tonight awarded the Millennial Olympic Games for the year 2000 to Sydney, Australia. Despite a long £5 million campaign, Manchester was only a distant third in a contest between five of the world's cities. It had been extraordinarily close. A final round from which Sydney beat Beijing by just two votes out of 88. I have a great sense of disappointment from, for my team, for, for my city, um, but a great sense of, uh, of uh, joy and, 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 and excitement for, for Sydney. A big surprise today from the International Olympic Committee. 
Many people expected it would announce Beijing China as host of the Games in the year 2000. But the winner was Sydney, Australia. That announcement triggered a wild middle-of-the-night celebration. Beijing was the runner-up. With a cacophony of sound and bathed in light this early Friday morning in Sydney, we have fireworks going off all over Sydney Harbour. We have more than 80,000 people assembled at Circular Quay, which is the downtown part of Sydney Harbour. And I can tell you that the joy here is absolutely palpable. It is about almost starting sunrise. The sun is about to, to rise on Friday in Sydney, and there's a feeling here uh, that the sun of a new millennium will rise on the Olympics in Sydney in the year 2000. It was looked upon here as a David and Goliath battle, a mere 17 million people in Australia versus the 1.2 billion in China. And Sydney has done it. They have pulled it off. A lot of happy Australians in Monte Carlo today, of course. Few more so than Prime Minister Paul Keating. This was his reaction, talking to Seven's Bruce McAvaney. This will come at the, just on the centenary of our Federation. It couldn't be uh, a greater indication to the world that Australia is a, is, a, is a nation with its own identity, there in its own right, uh, holding an international pageant, and an international pageant in sport, the thing which is most dear to the Australian heart. Mr Keating, there's a moment there, though, where uh, Mr Samaranch paused and actually had to turn the paper upside down there. What were you thinking? Well, I, I, when I, I, I honestly thought that the, the long draw at the balloting time was really running in our favour because the tension in here, I think, was between China and Sydney, between Beijing and Sydney, and the, what, what any, anything but a Sydney decision meant for the international Olympic movement and its politics. So I thought the long time was going to help us. So, I, I, you know, what was hard to, hard to tell. Everyone had serious faces but I thought we could possibly get there. Mr Keating, can I compare it with winning an election? Are you as excited at the moment as when Labor won? Oh, I, I, <laughs> oh, they're, 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 they're comparable, Bruce, they're comparable. Could we possibly declare a public holiday back home? Well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that, but I know there'll be a lot of celebrating going on. Now, Paul, what would you say to any boss who uh, they got crook if uh, someone didn't turn up at work today? Well, I, well, I, think, that, uh, I think that there's a... We'll have the time to savour this one and build towards this one because we've still got to make this the Olympics we hope it to be. And I think, I think that's, that's what we're looking forward to, 2000. We'll be looking for the recovery. You don't want to wait till the year 2000, but certainly this uh, is... Well, this should be a great confidence builder for the country, you know, to think that, in, that, that we can hack it in the big, in the big swim of, an, in, of an, inter an international decision like the Olympic Games. I think this is a, should be a great confidence builder for, for Australians to know that they're up there with the rest, that they're taken seriously, and Australia really ranks out there. Well, she was hyped as Australia's secret weapon, and she may have proved to be just that. 11-year-old Tanya Blenko, a student from Sydney's Bangor Primary School. Tanya is in Monte Carlo today. Her speech last night was a key part of Sydney's final presentation to the International Olympic Committee. Here's what she had to say. Mr. President, members, my name is Tanya Blanco. You may be asking why an 11-year-old girl is speaking to you today. Well, the reason is that I have a very important message for all of you from the children of Sydney and Australia. Thanks to the Sydney 2000 bid and your visit to our school, children like me now know a lot more about the Olympic movement. Three years ago, my school friends and I thought that the Olympics were only about sport. But through our lessons and your visits, we now know that the Olympics are about much more than that. You've made us realise how important the Games are to everyone, no matter which country we were born in. Sydney is a friendly city, where it doesn't matter where you come from. We are all Australians together. We eat together, learn together, and play sport together. And that's what the Olympics really means to me. It's bringing the young people of the world together to celebrate sport and friendship. Of course, I won't be young in the year 2000. I'll be 18. But I'm already a volunteer for the Sydney Games, and so is every single one of my friends. 
Like them, I'll do anything just to be a part of the Olympics. I've also learned at school how the Olympics are about protecting the environment. That's very important to us, and we think a Sydney Olympics would be a great way to show the world how we can all care for the planet. Thanks to the Olympics, this year has been amazing. In April, I met Mr. Ruhi from Mauritius when he visited Sydney, and he told us about his country and about the Olympic movement. My class photograph has been on the cover of this Share the Spirit magazine. Today, I'm not in school in Sydney. I'm in Monte Carlo. And now in, I'm proud to introduce our Prime Minister, Mr. Paul Keating. Isn't she fantastic? Tanya Blenko introducing the Prime Minister. Tanya was preceded in that presentation by a promotional video designed to show Sydney in its best light. So let's have another look at that. That's just one of the stunning videos that helped Sydney win. After the break, is the game's win a financial bonanza? That's next on this special edition of 11am. Great idea. Welcome back. We'll bring you that report on the financial aspects of the Games in just a moment. Meantime, 11am Canberra correspondent Helen McCabe spent the night at the Australian Institute of Sport. Here's how the athletes saw the announcement in. 
I'm talking with some of the gymnasts, the young kids who will actually be competing in the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Tim, what was your reaction when you first heard the news? I'm so happy. It's just great. What does it mean to you? Oh, everything, you know. Gonna be there. What sort of training schedule will you be able to take now? Will it be twice as hard? Yeah, much harder. And you'll be with competing in the 2000 Olympics? Yep, definitely. Too? Definitely I'll be there. <laughs> and do you think it'll make you train twice as hard? Yep, yep, definitely. I'll be uh, training at least three times harder. <laughs> did, you, did any of you think that uh, Sydney would actually win it? Nah, not a chance. No, I didn't think they'd win it at all. I was really happy. Oh, what can you say? We did great. And what you got next games coming up? Are you uh, competing coming up soon? Uh, future competitions now. Uh, yep. Commonwealth Games and... Um, there's a few good competitions in Sydney for gymnastics, that's about it. Well, can I talk to a few of the people behind you? You're a gymnastics yeah. model, right? Yeah. What does it mean to you? It means, it's an Australia, it's wild. I'm not doing anything. Did you think Sydney would win? I knew it all the way. I was with them, I was with them guys. I knew that would win. You were, mate. No, no, no. Thirteen, and you'll be competing in the year 2000. Yeah, sure. Did you think Sydney would win it? No, not really. I hope Sydney would win. What sort of training program will you undertake between now and then? I don't know, fairly hard one. I'll probably train hard then. Be his competitor to look forward to. Terrific. Oh, Terrific. And the same for the rest of you behind you, your gymnasts as well? No, we're soccer, soccer players. Soccer players. Soccer players. Tennis. Tennis players. Yeah, we're not actually available for the year 2000, but we'll be there in 96 to win the gold medal. So that when they come to Sydney, Australia will be the defending soccer champions. Yep, so. Terrific. Terrific. Well, that's about it from here. Oh, yeah. Got you, Sydney! <laughs> We heard briefly from our UK correspondent, Mike, Smith, Mike Smithson, in Manchester earlier in the program. Now that the full impact of Sydney's win has sunk in with the locals, he's filed an update. And also, the reaction from another contender, Berlin. Manchester had high hopes of stealing the 2000 games and the huge economic spin-offs which go with them. Despite the enormous odds, the English city was confident of proving to be the worthy alternative. Closer to the world action than Sydney, and a safer bet than Beijing. 50,000 people had gathered around the city square for the big announcement. The, the winner is Sydney! There was a collective groan of despair, followed by a rousing recorded chorus of always look on the bright side of life. Yes, the people of Manchester are bitterly disappointed, but the people here say life goes on as they party well into the night. In Berlin, it was exactly the opposite. Thousands had crowded the area around the Brandenburg Gate, and when the familiar Samaranch verdict was delivered... They were cheering with delight. Berlin had lost the games and they couldn't be happier. Most had opposed the Olympics from the start, claiming the money would be better spent on the East German economy. In London, Chris Reason for 11am. Sydney's skyline growing now, but set to boom as we head towards 2000. Sydney win will hopefully give this city and the whole nation a huge economic boost. Certainly a big boost in confidence. And with me now is the finance editor, David Koch. David, is this good news financially for Sydney? Because there's been a lot of controversy. Some people saying, look, it could be a financial disaster. What do they say? There are statistics, statistics, lies and statistics. Absolutely. Well, it all starts up here. It is going to be a great psychological boost to Australia. You're concerned about your family, paying your bills, spending any more money. Yeah. I am with my family, and most Australians are as well. And I think something like this really does give us a positive attitude. A something lift. to shoot. Yeah. Oh, it's just sensational. And when you consider that part of this deal is also that we have to hold virtually every world championship of games events in this city between now and the year 2000, we're going to have a rolling sort of run of events of tourists, of athletes, the whole lot. So economically, it starts up here. If it changes our attitude, we had yesterday a big drop in consumer sentiment because of the increase in unemployment and the problems with the budget. Now we sort of start today with a 
with a brand new vision, if you like. We've got the greatest show on earth coming to this city. Sure, the critics would say that it's going to cost us about $1.7 billion, yep. and, and the profit, expected profit, is just six. Now, no self-respecting business would uh, <laughs> spend that for that sort of profit, would well, it? Well, let's look at those figures. Sure, it might cost $1.5 billion to build everything. And the Olympic Games itself, at the end of two and a half, three weeks, may make seven million dollars that's not a great profit but in in this morning's coverage on channel seven they're inter uh, interviewing ken down ken will be laughing all the way to the bank <laughs> just his business <laughs> so you've got lots of businesses yeah. like that you've got the hotels we've got a glut of five-star hotels at the moment we probably won't have enough to cope with the tourist boom and also how do you want the olympics to pay back is the big thing if you expect all of your infrastructure all of your stadiums all of your uh, uh, your roads and buildings and everything to actually pay for themselves by the end of the olympics you're going to make a whopping great loss but you and i are going to watch the aussie rules grand final tomorrow on channel seven Indeed. and we're going to see it played in one of the great stadiums of the world that has been going for 40 years and was built for the melbourne olympics and so it's still making a profit presumably absolutely and contributes to that city the Olympic Park complex in Melbourne with the athletics track, with, with the glass house down there, the aquatic centre, they're, they're all major, major infrastructure that Melbourne has been enjoying for 40 years. Now, now if you look at it over that period of time, we'll make squillions out of the Olympics. And also jobs, of course. They're talking about 150,000 jobs or roughly that amount yep what sort of jobs are they going to be and uh, mm. I mean is that a conservative estimate or I think it is a pretty conservative estimate I think all the figures are pretty conservative that they put out KPMG Pete Marwick at the accounting firm that have done it and I think when you consider all the construction jobs that are going to be there at, at Homebush and putting the roads in and everything even hiring new staff for the hotels to cope with the tourists the people that actually work in the games themselves um, that they're going to add up. It's going to have a multiplying effect, even though a lot of them will be will be volunteers. My kids have already volunteered <laughs> for it to, through the local bank. And no doubt dobbed you in as well. Uh, exactly. They want to do the basketball, so they're keeping their fingers <laughs> crossed. But, but it will create it in all sorts of areas, ones that you and I haven't even thought of. The ripple-down effect, and not only for Sydney, but when those people who come for the games are not just going to come to Sydney, sure they're going to come and see the, the best athletes in the world, but then they're going to go to Wears Rock, they're going to go to Kakadu, they're going to go down to Melbourne and Tasmania, up to Queensland. So it'll be created all over the place. And I think you, you mentioned that the figures are pretty conservative, and I think the figure is, for tourism is something like 1.5 million extra tourists over some 14 years, which seems a very small, very low number. It is, it is. I, I think they've... I think they've done the right thing. They've been conservative, so hopefully they don't come back to us and say, look, we've got a huge cost blowout. Hopefully that won't happen. But in any big event, you're going to get the people come out and criticise it. Look at this thing behind us, the Opera House, uh, the fuel that went up over that, over the cost. For years and years oh, and years. And it is the jewel <laughs> of this country, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It is worth every cent. The same with Parliament House in Canberra. And I think we really do need to the, look at the Olympics in, in that way. Big Australian companies that are going to benefit from it, if, um, if you're looking for investments to benefit from the, from the Olympics, uh, construction companies like Lee and Lee sits the project manager out at, uh, out at Homebush, Leighton Holdings, the big building uh, supply, material suppliers like Boral, CSR, Pioneer, uh, the tourist groups, the, the list of tourist companies that are available, uh, the beer companies, you know, they've got to quench a few <laughs> thirsts at that time. So, so it really does go the way, even taxi plates in Sydney. Um, so, and I give a prize for the first real estate agent in tomorrow's classifieds. I wondered when you were going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> to actually say, have we got a prime Olympic property for you? Be careful with that, because yeah, yeah. there will be a lot of hype. It's and a I, bit dodgy, isn't it? I mean, oh, we've just been one through very, very a huge boom. Yep, you're quite right, because uh, tradition tells us that after every Olympics, no matter what the city, there is a huge property bust immediately after. Now, sure, buy a property because of the Olympics, but if you're going to do it, make sure you sell it before the Olympics to another sucker who's prepared, <laughs> prepared to pay that high price and, li and live through the downturn. So be just be very careful on that. OK, David, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Bill. Still ahead on this special 11 a.m., how Sydney will meet the challenge.